Rebecca again to my channel. For this episode, uh, we're going to be a continuation of our previous episode about the history of Philippine literature. This time around, we're going to be going into my ne uh, our next episode for 21st century literature classes, which is about the dimensions of Philippine literary history. So are you ready? I hope you're, you are. And also, I hope you already drink your tea and a cup of positivity. Okay, so I hope you'll have a happy learning as we go on with our next episode for today. So these are the topics to be learned for this lesson, like importance of knowing the Philippine literary history, the dimensions of Philippine literary history, the examples of Philippine literary history, applying those dimensions, and uh, the importance of knowing the dimensions. So let's start. So these are the importance of the knowing the Philippine le uh, literature or the Philippine literary history. When you try to learn the history of a certain story, you try to learn about one's origin and how past events work to shape different culture. It is very important that you know the different dimensions of the Philippine literary history so that you will have or I mean, you have the connection and you can relate on what is the story all about, okay? Another, it improves your reading skills and enhance your knowledge. Not just basically reading it, but also trying to incorporate it with other stories and with other situations. So it improves your reading skills. Another one is it encourages you to think critically when you try to balance and also incorporate and also predict, definitely you try to or you are being encouraged to think crit critically based on what you have read and also based on what you have watched, okay? Another is that you try to learn about person's life, struggles, stories, and message behind. So as what I have told you, you try to relate yourself not just by your own opinion and also based on your perspective, but also you try to learn about others' life and try to relate and try to compare about their struggles, their stories, and also what is the message behind the words and also behind the actions that you are watching and also you're reading from the text, okay? So next one is about uh, we try to know also their own culture. Remember that when you're watching, they have a different culture from the different region for Philippine literature. Or also, you try to know the culture of the family within their society. It doesn't mean that they are living into a certain region. I mean, the culture is being monopolized. No. Um, in a certain region going to a different place, and then going to another, uh, uh, I mean, uh, another family. So they have, I mean, from bigger to smaller, I mean, they have, or culture varies. Especially they are being influenced all, already by different culture. Another one is there is a reflection of the past. So past stories may help you understand what is happening now, okay? And also try to reflect what, mistakes that they have done or events that happened way back then that can be incorporated uh, incorporated with the recent one so another one is travel to different places to your imagination i know uh when you're reading on where or also when you're watching you're uh, i mean having a rich imagination because you become open to different places and also to different situations. And another one also is you have the pride of being a Filipino. You become like uh, you're owning it, even if you're not, because that is a story written by your fellow men. Okay? So you want to be like them also, you. So when you idolize them, you may, get, you may become a writer also in the future. So these are the dimensions, like I have told you, um, from the Philippine literary history. These are the dimensions of Philippine literary history. First one is about the geography. Second, which is about the language. And the third one is about the ethnicity. So let's learn about the differences of the three. 
Okay, so when we talk about geography from the word, uh, from the root word geo, this is just the study of places or the earth and the relationship between people and their environment. So basically, it talks about where did the story happen? Okay, so if the story is uh, happened in Quiapo, happened in Mindanao, so as you look into where it happened, you may visualize and imagine what is the life of the people living in it okay so that's geography next one is about the language or linguistic language or linguistic is basically this is a system of conventional spoken manual or written symbols which by which individuals express themselves what are the terms present in the passage that present the community um if you're going to be looking into stories or places, or I mean places of, of, or the platforms that were used, like for example, if it's in a movie, the, uh, the words that they use, if it's, for example, Pampangenya, so they're using the Pampangas word. Um, while for the others, kung yan naman ay, uh, ano to? Kung yan naman ay nangyari way back before, I mean, during the pre-colonial period na ang language ay hindi pa masyadong uh, formed, definitely you, you may understand and also what kind of community they are representing with. Okay? So, you need to look into what language are they using. Kasi makikita mo doon, kapag nalaman mo or na-describe mo yung language or linguistic that they use into that kind of story, into that kind of, I mean, um, platform, either it's written or watch, makikita mo kung anong era nangyari ang storya. At bakit ganun yung way of thinking nila based on the language they use. Okay? So next one is about ethnicity. Ethnicity is about, this is uh, the notion that refers to social entities sharing real or putative inscriptive uh, features like a common origin or a cultural linguistic legacy, which assembly commands special collective commitment as well as the retention and transmission. Um, this is basically more of the culture of the society that they are living with based on the story. So... Technically, this is the cultures and tradition of an ethnic group that they portrayed in the story. So kung ang historia ay about people power, definitely ang kultura noon ay more of fighting of freedom. Kung ito naman ay historia ng mga, uh, ng mga igorot, definitely the, the, the culture that they are living with is pang igorot. So do you need to look into the culture that they are living with and also their traditions? Kasi when do you know that na, na, naiiwasan yung pagiging bias? Nung, I mean, pagiging bias ang inyong opinion na bakit ganito sila, bakit may, bakit sila, bakit sila nag, nag, naglalagay ng piercing, o bakit sila ganun ang mga suot, o bakit ganun yung kanilang action, bakit ganun yung way of thinking nila. Because they are living into that kind of culture and tradition. If you're gonna be looking into the Philippines, or if you're gonna be looking also into the set of, of other countries. Sa iba, um, hindi welcome yung, yung, ano ito, yung arranged marriage. But for the others, it is okay because it is part of their culture and tradition. Okay? So again, that, uh, those are the language or the linguistic, the geography, and the ethnicity. Now, let's try to put it into the story. If we're going to be looking into Indra Patra at Suleiman story, this is the geographic, linguistic, and the ethnic dimension. So they, this, these are the examples. So for the geographic of the Indra Patra, uh, Indra Patra at Suleiman, that, uh, the story happened in Mindanao. Uh, Kahariana, Mantapuli, Kabilalan, Matutumbi, Tagurayo. So, if you're gonna be looking into that, yung, pati yung, uh, yung gamit na, I mean, pangalan, that's also thing for the linguistic dimension. The names in the Patra and Sulaiman are distinct in Mindanao. The names of the enemies, Kurita, Trabusao, Pa, are distinctive too. The weapons, Chris, Espada, and Juris Pakal. Well, for the ethnic dimensions, family members rules over kingdoms by blood. 
Men rulers, being very brave and good in fighting, use of priests, espada, juris, pakal in fighting, belief in symbols such as the death of a certain plant that represents someone is also the depth of the person. Birds and other creatures as enemies, belief in miraculous water that can bring back life, king letting their daughter to be married to another king or someone with a position as a gift or gratitude. So again, this is the example of if you're going to be looking and identifying the geographic, linguistic, and ethnic dimension of a certain story. Okay? So what is the importance of knowing the dimension? You need to understand the dimension of a certain story so that you will understand the context that they are trying to tell. Another one is you try to learn about the origin, about the history of the story and where they are coming from. And another one is you, need, you try to have a more vivid description of the situation because you understand the story and you understand the root. Okay, so I think that would be all for the dimensions of uh, Philippine literature. I hope we will, and that's the end for the first lesson. For the second lesson, we'll have it maybe for our next episode. Bye-bye, everyone, and don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel to be updated. And if you have, I mean, if you want the same content or like some content for this one and you want some clarification, you can comment down below what you want to discuss. Again, this is your teacher, Mama Maria Jessica Similia. Bye-bye, everyone.